When the world has got you down and Alzheimer's sucks. It's an equal opportunity disease that chips away at everything we hold dear. And to date, there's no cure. So until there is, we continue to fight with the most powerful tool in our arsenal, love. This is Love Conquers Alls, a real and really positive podcast that takes a deep dive into everything Alzheimer's, the good, the bad, and everything in between. And now, here are your hosts, Susie Singer-Carter and me, Don Priest. Hello, everybody. I'm Susie Singer-Carter. And I'm Don Priest, and this is Love Conquers Alls. Hello, Susan. Howdy, Don. How's it going? <laughs> it's going great. <laughs> it's, a lo- <laughs> it's a lovely uh, Saturday morning. It's about 72 degrees outside. What could yeah. be... What, there can be no problems, correct, Susan? Yeah, exactly. There can be zero problems. <laughs> yeah. Zero, none. <laughs> Life is grand. <laughs> it's just that simple. But simple, just like that. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, no... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. What's exciting? Let's talk about something good for a change. Um, let's anything? see. Hmm, <laughs> let me think. Nope. I'm blank. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something good. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can tell you. Yeah, I can tell you. Go ahead. Um, all yeah. right. So for a really long time, and you know this for a fact, yeah. I have been espousing the the absolute need like there's there's such a such a, a missing pocket of content for people that are have dementia and alzheimer's and all those kinds of you know that anything with memory loss and or any kind of degenerative disease for that matter and aging in general there's zero content created for that and i've been saying yeah. that and espousing it and saying We have it for children. We have it for tweens. We have it for adults. We don't have it for somebody who's on different cognitive levels. Why? Why is that? I'm really asking you why. Well, well, I think the reason is is there's a devaluation of (laughs) once you get past a certain age or or you're you're in a certain state, we start devaluing the human. No, you're right. Whatever. Uh, and then, so it's like and Logan's so it's Run. Like, well, it's like why? Logan's Run. <laughs> yeah, if you're over thirty, you're done. You know, uh, done. but I think that I, I think that's it. And you know, uh, also it's like, well, where's the money in it? All those there's all these you know that that the, mm. as we know, the dollar drives everything as far especially when right. creating content. And don't both you and I know that we created a pilot for for Fox. That we were we were hired to write because they wanted me to write something based on my life, and so we came up with a project called Silver Linings, which was about this woman, young woman who literally was scared to death of getting older, and um, and winds up running managing this uh, very posh senior center called Silver, Silver Linings because there was a lot of money to be made, and you know. Despite her her disdain for the elderly, she can't couldn't help but find the value, like you said, in these relationships that she began to to form, and and the arc was that you know she would she would she would learn to embrace what life is what life is really. So um, and everyone loved the pilot, and nobody bought it because it had that dirty word old in it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And that, everybody, that, uh, and it was funny, and it was irreverent, and it was based on all truth. And so, guess our guest today is making a huge change in that. And I was so excited because Judy Cornish, a good friend of mine in the in our community, introduced us and said, "I know somebody that's doing that." Because I was like bitching like I do about where's all the where's the content? Why is it, why why can't we just try to to keep people who ha- still have cognitive ability engaged so they just don't drift away. Anyway, yeah. tell our audience yeah. about who's here today because I'm excited. I will. I do. We have a wonderful guest today. Alba Maeno is a Franco-American filmmaker and successful documentary producer. Over the years, he developed a passion for integrative health, bringing conventional and complementary approaches together to care for the whole person. 
Alban used his passion and his expertise in film production as a tool to help improve the conditions of patients in palliative care, a medical caregiving approach aimed at optimizing quality of life and mitigating suffering among those with serious complex illnesses. All this led to the launch of Memory Lane TV, the very first streaming platform for people living with dementia and Alzheimer's, a therapeutic, non-pharmaceutical approach utilizing interactive, multi-sensory stimulation. It's a truly fascinating and invaluable venture, and we're so lucky to have him with us today to find out more. So let's say hello to Albin Maino. Hello, Albin. Well, thank you, Don. Welcome, Albin. Thank you, Susie. Thank you very much for having me on your show. And whoever is out there, hello, bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> I love it. Gosh, I'm so excited we we did it, and and I, I'm so happy to have you here. And you're you're a hero for for championing this kind of uh, uh, major endeavor. It's major, and and more than that, Alvin. It's I mean, just getting to explore your this this memory lane TV is just it's so first of all fascinating, compelling. It's got so much more than I even thought. I mean. It, I can't wait to have you describe what, what goes on there. What goes on there? Because <laughs> it, is, it is unbelievable. What brought you to this mission? Well, you know, like most, um, like most good social impact um, mission in general, they all always are driven by personal experience. So um, as Don was, was explaining, I, I'm a filmmaker, a photographer, a visual, a storyteller by essence. That's what I've done from France for many years. And, but I've always had a uh, passion for palliative care and end of life and essentially for a disease that had no uh, cure. And when my grandmother, who was probably, I mean, who was one of the most important, if not the most important woman in my life, uh, was diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's disease, I was like, certain that I could help uh, as his, her grandson. And she was someone who loved to dance and sing. She was always positive. She was the most generous woman. Anyway, we all have one person like that in our life. Yes. Right? And I thought, Correct. just like what you were saying, Susie, I was, uh, you know, I put my hat of filmmaker on and I started selecting her favorite, you know, uh, music and we danced and we started to interact. And as the disease pro pro progressed, I was just like, well, we need something more. We need exactly what you were describing. And to me, there was no question because I was familiar with the pathology. Mm -hmm. So there was no question that it existed. I was just like, there's a television mm -hmm. for dog, right? You know about dog TV, great TV. Yes. Yep. Was yes. Like, there's yep. a television yep. for my grandmother. Of course there's one. So I started looking left and right and talking to mm -hmm. professionals. There was nothing and I couldn't understand it. You know, I looked all around the world. So I was just like, wow, this, this, is, this is what I needed to be doing. So this was the inception of the beginning of Memory Lane. And that was almost nine years ago now. It was, um, in French, we say a sacerdoce, uh, a, a priesthood to get to where we are now. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit of that adventure. But what was originally just a, a concept, an idea to help her, really quickly turned out into something much more and has evolved uh, 10 years later in, in a really complete multi-sensory intervention where we engage all the senses and where we use visual stimulation, auditory, and we make it person-centered. We focus on the story of the people who are using it, and we're making it not only uh, something that is so important in the care uh, ecosystem for uh, the end users and the people who are, you know, all of us are suffering for memory loss, but also for our care partners, our loved ones, our grandsons, our sons, yeah. our partners, for everybody. So yeah, everybody. That's how it started. Um, it's so it's so freaking exciting. It's so exciting to me. I mean, even my mom, who's in hospice now, and and you know, hospice. I I now have a obviously a better understanding of it because it can be two days to six months to a year, whatever it is. So there's still life being lived, and so that you know, how do we make every part of life quality? How do we make it? you know, 
how do yeah well, otherwise why are we why are we kept alive right yes. so and that's what i keep trying to 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 communicate to everyone every day this is a human being she looks like an old lady but she's not inside there she is my mom and she's like your grandma yes. a bon vivant outrageous loving loves life and even lying there on her bed, I can make her laugh and she will say, I love you. Yes. You know, that resonates so much. What you're saying, Susie, is specifically, I, actually, you know, I've been working for the past few months on a project that started 30 years ago based on a poem that was found. We don't know who wrote it called, uh, and it's, it's popular in our world. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called, Do You See Me? And it's this old poem that was found after the departure of, of, of a woman in a nursing home who says, you know, I might look really grouchy and, and aggressive and combative all the time. And you think that I'm just this old person in her wheelchair, but I've had a life. I've had a wonderful life. I've had children. I've had extraordinary. I've, I went through all so much in 80 years. And we have a tendency to uh, push aside. And I, you know, some of, of that quality that people have and, and, and my hope is that what we've done um, with all the people and the good folks who have helped me over the years with Memory Lane is to help resurrect one of that by relating into something very simple, very grounded, um, which is to be present in the present moment, like to breathe, to ah. help, to dream, you know. Yes. Originally, the first concept yes. of my plot-free um, because there's no plot in memory lane. There is a plot, but it's not character driven. You know, Susie, I loved your film. It was such, that's uh, how we met. That's how we met because I was yes. like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. As a different levels of dementia cannot follow that plot or not for a very long time. Yet, it, no, they can't. And they want to be in that moment. So I've, we've created different forms of, of, of content where you can actually follow a plot, but it's not character driven. It can be a cloud. It can be a moment in time. And we've measured that through, you know, being in the field and realizing how long people can stay in front, can stay engaged, can interact. And also realize that the needs were different. You don't dream in the same yes. way in the morning when you wake up. We all feel the same in the afternoon, right before lunch, when you need to stay on an arc where where people are, um, you know, incentivized to eat or when you're suffering from a panic attack and you're very anxious and you're tired because at the end of the day. So this is, this is really at the epicenter of what we're doing is like, really, our needs, our human beings are different, but it is very important that we stay grounded in the present with everyone around us. And it's true for people who are, it's true for us, but it's even more true for people who are suffering from memory loss you know we they need to mm -hmm. think they need to breathe they needs to see and listen and be alive in that moment and we can help we yes. really can help and, yeah and they it's need so time yeah. they yes. need time to, to to process you know what i mean like like there's all like you have 50 years of science of like research behind this which right. is like amazing and those and you know i think everybody as we as none of us come in with like a, a a handbook of what how to deal with memory loss and and dementia all the different kinds of it and you know i mean i think i was blown away when i first started to volunteer and i learned that it takes at least 20 seconds for someone with dementia to process a question right. yes. and most of us don't know how long 20 seconds is right. and most of us just assume the person isn't isn't you know responding right you're right, and auditory and visual perceptions are so different. Tipa Snow, for example, has so many good um, videos where she explains and where you can actually, and now we even have VR, you know, representation of this is how it looks like. You might think that mm -hmm. you're catching things in the air, but no, it's like because of visual perceptions, you don't know where the floor is. You don't hear things as well. So it's really hard to put yourself in there. And you said something very important, Susie. I... I put those things together. Uh, Don mentioned I, I'm a film producer. And yes. what I've learned through my career is that I don't know how to do anything except identifying the expertise and the experience. And on a film set, for example, 
you know, to me, the gaffer is just as important as the executive producer, as the film director. And if you don't have every single one of them, you don't have a film. You know, if you don't have sounds, forget Correct. about it. If you don't have a camera, if you don't have a gaffer, if, you know, if you don't have coffee, you don't have anything. Uh, <laughs> so so in, in that sense, um, Memory Lane, I didn't invent anything. Basically, 50 years of science. Oliver Sacks, in the beginning of the 70s, you know, described in Musicophilia, you know, the, his work with patients who had dementia at the time and the importance of music. Uh, Michael Rosano Bennett, mm -hmm. since one of our friends, you know, and uh, who won um, uh, uh, an award for Alive Inside, described what a <laughs> music illumination is, you know, and, and how important music stays triggered. Um, decades of, of, of research in cognitive stimulation, in olfactory stimulation, we know that this is the direct pathway to the brain. All those tools, all those tools are part of what we can do to really enhance the quality of life for everybody. And the last, the last element I think that is so crucial, and you mentioned it also, Susie is the caregiver and the par care partner and the education. Like, we don't know what's yes. hitting us, right? We don't know what's hitting us when we get older. And and the yeah. first time that we're representing it is through with our parents. You know, we, we see we're aging yeah. and we see them aging. We want them to be young. They're not there like that anymore. And we want to yeah. communicate. So and, and if unfortunately they're affected by one of those, you know, memory loss or, or, or dementia or Alzheimer's, although it's really hard to diagnose any of it, how do you how do you make this a positive experience? And I think yes. I have found a way to make it a good, I mean, in my personal experience, I, and, and this is the message, right? If you can trigger a way to transform what is a dramatic experience into something positive, then you, you're you golden. So in other words, y yes, find the one, find the yes, one yes, yes, your yes. mom's <laughs> smile, find the image, yes. find the music, find the moment, and then that trigger can be reproduced as many yeah. times as you want. This is where what you're doing is so, uh, so important because from the time Susie's mom has been in the care facility she's been in, we would walk in and we'd see a group of all the, you know, all the residents there and they've got a TV on and they're playing, oh, I don't know, an old movie. They're playing Singing in the Rain. That's great. It's something that might, you know, somebody might enjoy, but that's, that's not made for, for them. Right. That's, that doesn't tap into the things that you're talking about. Uh, they're, so they're just sitting there kind of staring lethargically yes. at this movement and sound in front of them. Yes. And Susie said from, she goes, oh my God, why? She said this, you know, why, why isn't there something for them? Right. Why? You know, and it's not this. And it's great. It's better than staring at a blank wall, but yeah. it's certainly not what's going to stimulate those memories and those senses uh, right. like what you're doing now. So w what you're doing is, is and, it, it's incredibly important. And as you've seen, there are results from that. Yes, we, yeah. you know, we've studied it for over six years with over a thousand people in different types of setting, whether it's early onset, you know, diagnosed of the disease or much far advanced. And what you're saying, Don, is so crucial. Um, in order also to appeal to everybody, it has to be person-centered. We all have our history. It taps on what we were saying before, right? So if you were born in 1940 on the coast of California or Maine, and you had a, I don't know, a golden retriever and, and you know, specific uh, uh, memories, then those will resonate with you. And the way memory works, which is fascinating, we can create and recreate memories that we haven't lived. This is, you know, how dreams works as well. We think we've mm -hmm. lived them. So by pushing the content, by personalizing and customizing, and this is what we do with Memory Lane, by the way. One of the first thing you do when you register on uh, our platform you, is you fill out a live survey, a questionnaire. Very simple, very quick, 10, 15 minutes. You do that with your loved ones. And, and we, we get to learn about who you are. You know, and what resonates with you, what era, what decade, what's your favorite song, what's your favorite genre of music. And this way, you don't have what you were describing, Don, that disconnection. And because also we're not giving you a linear plot to follow that you, after three minutes, you're totally done. You actually get engaged and one minute it's a butterfly, another minute it's a, it's a, it's a song. And we, we've noticed also that, you know, 
The attention span to watch television is about 26 minutes, if, we, if we're very precise. So our sessions, uh, our dream scene sessions last 26 minutes. And of course, I want to emphasize this, this is so important. Our goal is not to put people in television. We want to get them away from other screens. We want to be able to put people in the garden, in the forest, but the reality is different. This is a primary tool that we have here and we are not using it well, to your point, Don. We have to use it differently for that demographic specifically. And we cannot use it all the time, but we can use it two, three, four times a day at moment where really we need a new tool and not a pharmacological tool who, by the way, don't work or take a long time, you know. Someone has a panic attack. My mother always thought I was a magician. She says, how do you do this? You know, she's got, she's breathing hard and, and should we call 911? No, you redirect the attention. How do you do this? Well, just like you would do with your five-year-old kid, right? He falls and he hurts and he yes. screams and oh my God! I said no. Oh look at that butterfly! Oh, what that? <laughs> exactly. And, and, and to a certain degree, we can do that with every single one of us. It's 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 not right. brain science. And people, professionals, use it all the time. Redirecting attention can be learned, and you can do that if you're grounded in the present moment with music, with media, and and all of a sudden, you know, the sundowning syndromes. Maybe some of your audience probably are, are well aware of, of, of that symptoms that happens towards the end of the day that creates a lot of anxiety and stress. We don't really know where it's coming from. It's, if it's because of the shift, the tiredness of the day, but this is really hard. It's a really hard moment to manage. And so we have specific film for that towards the end of the day that follow a specific arc. Right? We create a cinematic environment. We take them in a journey and, and slowly we redirect their attention to a quieter, a peaceful place. And we enhance that with different sensations uh, by stimulating different senses um, and adapting it specifically to that moment. So, and that's good for everybody. You know, it's good for the caregiver. Everybody. Good for the care partner. Everybody. For everybody in general. It, you're so right, Alan, because I always say like, it's like, you know, our life, especially with people with dementia in particular, it's like Benjamin Button. So, you know, we, we're, we're going backwards out the door and, and we're losing cognitive skills, but we're not losing all our skills. So all the senses, you know, remain intact for, for a long, hopefully, we don't know how long. I mean, I don't know. I still put flowers under my mom's nose and go, I know that she loves gardenias. And I go, mm. mom, smell this. Or I brought, I bring, because Jasmine was in season, you know, just in March. So it's like I filled the room with Jasmine. And, and it's just, you know, I know that, that would, that's going to make her feel good. It's going to, it's going to conjure up good, good, good endorphins, right? Yes. And, um, and I think, with babies, it's the same way. You know, we don't, we don't get, we get that they're, it's difficult with babies. They throw up on you. You have to change their diaper. They don't talk. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And, but we love them and we, we, we invest our time in them and we, we, we speak to them at the level that they're at. We don't expect more than the level that they're at. We don't say, come on, you've got two legs, walk. Right. And they're six months old, right? Yeah. So if somebody is eighty nine and they're and they are you know immobile, we don't we can't get frustrated. We have to say this is where they're at. Right. And I tell my mom all the time, "Good job, mom. You swallowed so well just now. <laughs> good job. You swallowed." <laughs> and I'm get I get excited because she swallows yeah. good, without choking. And I make and I'm very happy about that. Those it's the little things. And you know everything you're. Describing Susie is, is resonates so close to home, but uh, what, our, your experience and your knowledge from that field seems natural, but it's not. That's that's why one of the things that we've done also in Memory Lane was a, what I call the caregiver, the care partner channel. So we've gathered a lot of the best tips in the world from the best care partners. Tipa Snow is one of them, but you see, mm -hmm. I mean, lots of yes, I love her are doing great work and. And we need to know, we need to know exactly how to do, how to behave, what are, what's going on here. And that's crucial because we're talking about multisensory. Okay. So we understand yeah. the visual, we understand the auditory, the music, the soundscapes. Um, you just touched upon what Proust, do you know the French author? 
Proust, 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 Marcel Proust. Proust. Yes, of course. Okay, yeah. So he described uh, what we refer in France, I don't know if it's an American expression, but a Madeleine de Proust, a, a Madeleine is that, that little cookie. And in the mm -hmm. yes. one, I made a Madeleine, but she's a she's a girl. I made one. <laughs> <laughs> I have a daughter. I have a daughter What's named Madeleine. Name? <laughs> yes. My niece is Madeleine. It's a beautiful name. But in French, when we refer to a Madeleine de Proust, it, it refers to a passage, a four-page passage in Du Côté de Chez in one of his books, where he describes how he relieved an emotion from his childhood, from where, when his grandmother was making those little cookies, and just by the scent mm -hmm. of the cookies, instantly, he was transported. And we've all had mm -hmm. that déjà vu, déjà vu, uh, you know, sort of experience that déjà is, vu. is coming <laughs> through the direct pathway to the brain and the olfactory stimulation. And, and this is so powerful. And, and so this is one of the way we do it, but we wouldn't be able to do it if we don't do this with the care partner either, right? So, uh, right. And, and, and the caregiver, when we talk about touch, for example, or swallowing, you were yeah. just mentioning, you know, this. Yeah. So this is obviously not provided with memory lane, but we can educate the caregiver and the care partner. This is how you do it. This is how yeah. you touch mm -hmm. someone or you don't touch someone. Yes. What are the boundaries? Exactly. You know? I didn't know anything about this until you embark on this journey, and and I would have I would have had so much. It would have been much faster if everything was easily accessible. Oh, don't get me wrong; there are a lot of resources out there, but where do you find them? How do you access them? And how do you make them digestible? And I think one of the greatest thing that chance that we have. I mean, my vision was not implementable eight years ago when I started because of technology. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, right. since COVID, now everybody's getting familiar with all the technology we're on today. But be thanks to Google, Amazon and, and you know, uh, Apple and all those big players out there, they've given us small producers or creators or storyteller the ability to deliver through a pipeline that. So anyone who has a Roku and Apple TV or a, tele or a smart TV in their living room, which is most of us, can access that now. You know, we don't need to be a big network broadcaster. This is what has transformed our industry over the past 10, 15 years. And it's happening also mm -hmm. in healthcare. And um, I want to I want to say something about what Don mentioned earlier on that struck me. You know, when I was saying, you know, there is a television for dog and there's not a television for mom. And, and, I, and I said, well, this project, I'm going to be able to finance it because it's so important. I don't care if it's a not-for-profit or a pro but it's so important that it's going to be a no-brainer and it was really hard and it still is and I couldn't understand why but Don pointed it out you know there's not much money you cannot sell much to those people there's you know unless you're a nursing home and you want to help them by providing them shelter they are not into our consumerism you know environment so it's really hard it's not an app for the Zen G generation it, it really takes people who really want to do good to help out. So this is one of my shout out today. It's like, we need every single one of you, every people from everywhere, uh, people in the media who understand the importance of storytelling, the importance of what we do, you know, people in Hollywood where you are, I've never been. Uh, come on, help us yeah. out. Let's, let's give this- thing Help us out. Let me, let me throw out a statistic that might be, might become, you know, compelling to our uh, our gatekeepers in Hollywood is that there's 53 million caregivers in America. And, and th th that's a lot. That's a lot of uh, people. And we, and all of us, every single one of us could use this. Yes. It's not just for them. It's for all of us. It's for the whole community that, that, is a, that takes part in caregiving whether you're a care receiver or a caregiver. So this it's important for all of us and we we need products too. And they and there are and you know so if you want to talk bottom line and you know uh, and on an economic level there's plenty money to be made. Right. There's plenty and, of room for know, sponsorship. If, there's you know definitely. there's you know and you know those things you know the dollar the dollar talks and the dollar drives yeah. everything and there's nothing forget. wrong with bringing in income to help support something like this right. through that sponsorship, is, yes. you know, there's, there's ways to make it work all the way around. As a matter of fact, when I started this, I, 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 I was really debating how, what's the best way to make it available. 
my vision was always, okay, a lot of the pain points, a lot of the people are people like us who um, 80%, that's another important element, 80% of the people that are suffering from early onset dementia or dementia are staying at home. You know, the nursing home is the last platform. And they, there's, there's a lot of help in nursing homes. There's a lot of tools. When you're at home, you don't. And I was just like, how do we make this available for free? And um, I was really lucky to win an accelerator program up in Boston when I arrived. And everyone says, no, you cannot go through the not-for-profit route because you need to have something that is sustainable and, and, and that will last forever. And this is, and also, you know, this can, can be globally. It's not only the 53 million American caregiver. It's like globally. Of course, no. Because it's for free, so it's not character driven. There's no voiceover except for a few storytelling. And, and, and I called my friends. I worked with Doctor Without Borders for many years. And I said, okay, I don't know what to do with this. And I said, well, think outside of the box. Just like Don was saying. Maybe there's, there's a donor out there that will say, I want to make this available for everybody. And this is going to be my legacy to the world, you know. Or maybe there's sponsorships for big companies that would say, okay, they don't need to pay for it. Because we don't want to add to the burden of caregivers who are already at home and struggling to say, okay, I mean. And so I made, I made the memory lane available enough so we can put the lights on, you know. So it's, it's a very... Yes cheap subscription it is so economical we couldn't believe it don it's so reasonable don and i were like oh my god i mean it is it's like less than a cup of coffee you know a day i mean it it really is i'm not saying that as a sales tool it's like a cup of coffee now it's like a cup of coffee a day yeah (laughs) i mean not a day a cup of coffee for the whole month well it's it's one coffee for the whole month yeah 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 i'll tell you it's that reasonable and susie we did that because of people like you because of a uh, uh, content provider who have given me a lot of content, you know, who are uh, filmmakers around the world who also have been touched by this. And they said, we'll help you, Albon. We know we don't have any money for licensing. You know, you need a lot. And, and another thing that we just launched about a month ago is a, so just so that people understand, you know, it's an application just like Netflix. You download it and you can select your programs and categories and all that. But, uh, We've added another dimension, a linear channel, a 24-7. So if you don't have time to select or, or to go to your watch list, you can just play on it and it's linear all the time. So we have, there's over 450 it. hours of content behind that. I could never have wow. afforded it. I love it. it. And, and I still need more. Hello, people in Hollywood. We need more content. Yes. Uh, yes, we do, people. Yeah, come on. And 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 We need Sesame yes. Street. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but we no. need Sesame Street. Yeah, yeah. Right? Bob Ross, for example. The Bob Ross Foundation gave me a lot of their content. You know, he has such a soothing voice. We, have, wow. we have cooking shows. We have uh, nature relaxation. David Hutting, kudos to my friend David. Uh, out there who provided me with lots of hours of content for nature relaxation uh, and 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 the Beautiful. story goes on and on this is how I was able to do it because a lot of people have helped me out and says Abon you're in for the good thing we're going to help you out but the yeah. story is not yeah. over now we're available everywhere everybody can access memory lane the next stage is for me to get that everywhere so thanks to you Don Susie for helping me get that word out because that's the next day stage is we want a lot oh, of people to sure. start using it so that all our friends will say, Hey, we're going to help that out. And honestly, Absolutely. you were talking about it, you know, people being at home for a good deal of the time it you know, when they get, for, when they're first diagnosed <clears throat> with any kind of cognitive um, impairment, but there, once you do transition to a nursing home, um, it, it can be a very long time because, you know, when my mom became incontinent and, and unable to, to walk anymore, uh, you know, it, it, it was better for her to be in that environment. Okay, so they absolutely, and it, it, you can go to the best, the highest rated, the most expensive assisted living, and your loved one, I'm sorry, I'm going to be so blunt, it's not going to get the attention that they need. Right. They're going to get their medical attention. They'll, they'll, they can stay, they'll, they'll most likely survive physically, mm-hmm. but mentally they are going to just disappear if, you're, if, if they have no input. And that, they will, they just will. Yeah. And nobody can survive without touch 
or talk or communication or socialization or or you know stimulation. So we and and honestly, and COVID proved that. COVID proved you know proved their it. isolation yeah. and COVID proved it. It proved it, and and that's you know with minimal and those and those were people. Even at my mom's facility, the people that didn't have memory issues but were elderly that I happened to, they were my friends. In, you know, they were, I loved them, have passed away because of isolation. So nobody can, you know, animals can't, little babies, chimpanzees can't be without their mommies. Right. They, they need touch and love and, and stimulation. So just to keep that in mind, that ha- what a powerful tool this is when we can't be there also because we can't always be there and um and it's so important you know another thing that that is that you know first of all kudos to our healthcare force out there this is the biggest problem that we're facing right now is there's not enough people in that you know, nope. to take care of our parents and when i'm saying our parents it's literally our parents our uncles and aunts and, and husbands and wives who are there you know they're not residents they are our family people and and what i've witnessed you know in the field is exactly what you're saying susie is there is not enough worker out there the cnas the nurses they have so much work that they don't have time to engage and when you have the luxury or the chance to be in a good facility and they have yoga teachers or musicians that come not everybody get wheels out wheeled out to down in the floor because it takes it takes ten workers to wheel everybody. So a lot, a lot of people are either left behind or cannot even move or staying in their room, and the isolation, the despair of that is so sad. And the only thing that we can yeah. do because we can't take them outside, or we can't take them to a place where they have that kind of support, is all right. Giving them at least you know a way to dream through the tools that we have these days. Virtual VR, you know, I'm so, working with a firm in VR for future. And those things we can we can do things like wow, or replace it. wow, it's, that's it, yeah, a, and, that and, sounds exciting. Yeah, and even if they have those, uh, offer those, you know, the uh, the the live music, but it's like once a week. Yes, you know, so on Sunday afternoon yeah. they do this thing. It's right. well, well, there's six other days and 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 24 other hours uh, that that yeah. they're not that stimulation isn't there. So for this to exactly. you know, it doesn't replace one-on-one personal uh you know uh, interaction but boy (laughs) it makes a it's such a huge huge difference um and and it and it i wanted to know is there a difference between the person with dementia or alzheimer's watching this on their own or watching it with their caregiver what is the different is there a a different effect don you're you're pointing something so important and, and crucial and at the epicenter of my vision when i started this I mentioned the fact that it had to be person-centered, customized, uh, and the role and the interaction between the care partner and the person who's suffering from memory loss um, uh, is, is, is right at the epicenter of memory lane. We wanted to create something uh, that was a new tool to interact. So you could find your mom or your dad or your partner again. So you are watching or using, let's say using interactive media to address and improve your quality of life, but you can stop it in the middle. And this, and you're anchored in the present moment to describe what's happening or something that's, and then you interact and you create a new bond. You start talking. You don't talk about Uncle Joe last week. You don't remember mommy came or what's happening tomorrow. I already told you five times that it's happening tomorrow. Mm -hmm. No, you're right here, right there, right now. You're interacting with the program. You stop it. You, and, and sometimes we even have, uh, you know, making an apple pie. All right, you're going to make the apple pie. You, we, we encourage people to bring tools to make an apple. We encourage to bring an apple pie and eat it. You know, it's not about... I love it. It's not about love it. watching TV. It's about interacting. It's about being all together. Right. So, of course, when, you need, when, when your loved ones are not there, you can still use it and you can still dream and you interact and you can actually follow. You can fall asleep in front of it and wake up and you're still in it. It's nothing has happened. Yes. You haven't lost anything. So it's a good tool to use. Right before lunch, we leave people on the heart up here. Like, oh, I want to get out of my chair and I want to have one of those burgers or one of those good fruits that I've seen. 
you know, at the end of the day, for sundowning, they're more calm. So, um, you know, different tools at different hours of the day. Another symptoms that people are not aware, but when you, circadian rhythm, the rhythm of the day, day and night, right. is lost to a certain degree when the disease progresses. You don't know if it's three o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the afternoon. So how do we regulate this? Well, we follow the rhythm of the day with our films as well. So the films are different. You wake up with the bird sounds. You know, one of the things I do when I wake up is I look at my bird feeder for a half an hour and try to meditate. Meditation, by the way, is not to look at your Buddha and just sitting quietly. It can be watching a bird and just looking at the bird for 15 minutes. So, you know, this is what meditation is all about. It's about emptying your spirit and redirecting attention. So the morning, lunches, afternoon occupational therapy, sundowning, and at night when you're heronding, the moon is there. Oh, it's it's there. It's it's the night. I understand where we are. And all those tools are very different. So, you know, just to circle back to your original question, Don, yes, it's a tool that can be used and that I want to be used uh, by care partners along with the people that are you that are the end users. And my, my next project, uh, and we're currently developing it, is to go even a little further than that. I mentioned that people can just you know, choose and we push different type of content, but we're developing an algorithm that will uh, go even further than that. So we'll allow you to upload your own media, your own photography, your favorite songs, your favorite playlist, and we're going to create a very specific playlist that will be just mm. for you, Don, just for you and your mother, Susie. And we've mm -hmm. tried that for three years. You know, we've done some research with that. And this is the most incredible tool to use the power of cinematic perception, how we can create environment customized to your own story. Imagine your favorite song, your right. memory as a child, and you're all of a sudden you're going to share that with your mom. I mean, tears will come out, laughter. Susie made, Susie made this, you know, it's just uh, pictures and videos and music of just, you know, the family, her past. Her pre you know, My the mom present, was a you know, singer, yeah. Every, yeah, every, from, from her as a child all the way up to her, her great-granddaughter yeah. uh, in this, you know, little media screen that just sits there and plays for her. Even so when, you know, when, you know, when Susie's not able to be there, uh, that just, it, she's, it's always, she's always enveloped in it. And I talk and, to her on it. I record it. I right? say, hi, mom, how you doing? Right. I'm thinking about you, and I'm I'm loving you, and I'm giving you kisses, and oh. I'm talking to you, and I'm going to be there soon. And I talk to her, you know, just very simple. Yes, yeah, Susie, simple. you are memory. It sounds like what you're doing. Well, I, I, yes. You know, <laughs> we, this is what we do. This is we. It's common sense, right? Yeah. Just like I was. Yes, it is. It, it is. Let's find memory lane. It's some somewhere out there. It wasn't. So here we are. Now it is. It exists. And what you're applaud, saying, applaud, you know, applaud, I haven't applause. invented something magical. Of course, you know, we have photography, we have music, and we can personalize it. And it's a fantastic, fantastic tool. Could, I mean, you're, you're a filmmaker, you're a great filmmaker, you know how to use the power of imagery. Let's make that available and teach everybody to do those things. You know, I would love that. I think everybody listen, we do it for our children. Let's do it for our parents and our uncles and our let's do it. Let's be there for them. And I'm telling you, I, I swear. I mean, listen, I grew up in Los Angeles. It's fast and it's anonymous and it, and it can be cold here. And and but I, I, I have n I've never gotten so much satisfaction than I have doing this what I'm doing with my mom. This stage is hard, but it's as hard as it is raising my my babies. Yeah. And as as rewarding. I get as ex like I said, I get as excited about my mom Lisa. swallowing their food as I did my babies yeah. swallowing their food. I do. And I and I when she smiles, it's as if when my baby smiled to me. I'm like, "Oh my god, she smiled. Did you see that? She smiled." Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of your mom's energy in you. You know, we talk about reincarnation and, and all those things. And we are the reincarnation of our parents, right? We are the very uh, proof of reincarnation and the energy that your mom has, the energy that my grandmother gave me to do this. She was so positive always. And I knew how to trigger that in her. And, she, and this was her message as well. You know, it was like, no, no, life is beautiful every day. 
you know, everything is, is possible. Everything is good. So keep up with it. So we need that energy. We need to communicate. You can decide to see the glass of wine, how full or how, you know, empty. It's, it's up to us to decide. And for Alzheimer's disease, as I was saying earlier, when you find the right trigger, my goodness, isn't that fun? You find the right song, you find the yeah. right joke, you can just demultiply it and you can laugh yourself with it. You know, it's fantastic. Isn't it good? To it's laugh? fantastic. I'm telling you, it is so great, you guys. It's that simple. Life is really that simple. It really is. And, and you know, it just it is, there's nothing better. There's nothing better. Like even when I would go, when before COVID and, and, you know, as I said, my mom was a singer where we all sing and my daughters and I would come and, you know, I listen, I was basically like a Lady Gaga to them. There was like, Susie's here. Come on. Like all of the people, all the 90 year olds were like gathering around. I had my fans and they, and I couldn't feel more like a rock star yeah. for those, those 15 people or 10 people or five people or two. Yeah. What well, doesn't matter? They they enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, and and it's it's really it's really that that it's really that's what it's about. At the end of the day, what else do we have? That's Everything absolutely. else is borrowed. Yeah. I I had one other thought, uh, which that just one. I only, I I'm limited as my <laughs> amount of thoughts I can have, but uh, <laughs> as we all know <laughs> well, you're that s- you're a simple man. <laughs> <laughs> I am very simple. I'm wondering, is there another? Uh, benefit to memory lane TV, which is for the caregiver themselves. As we all know, caregiving can be devastating as to the health and mental health, physical health of the caregiver. Uh, do you find that when the caregiver watches along with them, or maybe they just watch it on their own, is there a, have you found there's an effect or a benefit to the caregiver as well? Yes, we, actually, we've studied that as well. Uh, to me, I don't want to say that I developed a memory lane for the caregiver, the care partner, but essentially I did because I knew that that tool needed to be used in combination. And the care partner is ultimately the person that's going to decide to use this and to be using it. And you're right, they're used. So there are direct, to answer your question very precisely, Don, direct and indirect benefits. Um, First of all, the caregiver uh, channel that I was mentioning before, Uh, You know, a lot of education in there, but we also have um, specific um, engagement classes for yoga, for meditation. Um, But when you're looking at some of the films, it acts in the same way whether you are suffering from memory loss or not. So it does work in the same way. And when your loved one is actually using memory lane 26, 30 minutes a day, several times a day, and you know that they're engaging in a positive way, this is a bit of respite. It's respite immediately from like, wow, I can do my taxes, not that's any fun. Or I can just relax and read my book, you know, or sit right next to it and then interrupt for a moment. And that decreases the level of anxiety and stress of the care partner just as much. So it it affects both. It affects, and you know, if someone uh, doesn't have a panic attack or sundowning is lowered or you help someone falling asleep at night, uh, through the use of olfactory stimulation and lavender or through the use of specific films, then you go to sleep earlier, you know. So, yes, there are direct benefit for the caregiver um, that, are, that are measurable, that have been measured, and not only for mm-hmm. the caregivers at home, but also for uh, the people in the field, the, you know, the CNA and nurses and, and, and occupational therapists that, that want to use that as a tool or that actually have more mm-hmm. time because they... You know, I, I was stunned when I started this a few years ago. They were like, oh, my God, you've got something to replace the six o'clock news. Thank God, <laughs> because it's horrible, yeah. especially now, you know, with the war and the COVID. Six o'clock, but it's a hub. Everyone wants to be there at six o'clock because, you know, it's social. Mm-hmm. What do you put? Where, yeah. where is the positive news that doesn't generate anxiety? Because what they see is what it is. And that's stressful. So we needed something yeah. to replace that, and there it is. There's no way they have enough people to no. take care of the people they have no. there. So what they do is they set them in front of a TV, and that's hopefully that, yeah. you know. But this, you know, if they're yeah. as opposed to uh, giving them uh, a sedative or Depakote or something to calm them down, it's like, yeah. you know, a great non-pharmaceutical alternative to that that helps, the, that helps the nurses and everything so they're not, you know, they can – 
they can do what they need to that they absolutely need to do as opposed to trying to tend to this person because they're they don't know what to do or see or anything so it's the benefits are are multi-layered and wow so very much so yeah and also i think i i think what i just wanted to say i think as far as you you know engaging the being able to engage with the person that you're caring for is so great and 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 that's very much dependent on the kind of content because if you just take Sesame Street as an example you know they just had a, a they they're especially with music they were they're just very you know sophisticated yeah. in terms of of their songwriting and their engagement in that to the point where we as parents I know every song from you know all of their albums because they're all really good, yes. and we and we sing along to them, and you can't help it. They're just they're memorable, they're fun, no. they're engaging, and so you want to put that on. You want to click to that for your kid yes. because you like it too. Yes, and and that is true. But you know the most uh, popular songs that we all know are not necessarily. And people think, oh, put the music from the 1920s and 30s and 40s. No. They like the Beatles, you know, the next generation. Mm -hmm. yes! They like uh, sing songs that are part of our cultural history from 20 years ago, 30 years. Definitely. Beatles are now 50 years old, you know? Yeah, so, exactly. Know. That was their music too. Right, totally. <laughs> and and I, unfortunately, I can't afford to put that on. I don't have the licensing or the rights to do that. But we can still, I teach people how to do it. I, I can't put it because I can't buy the rights of the Beatles, but you can access them. Here's how you create your own playlists, you know? Uh, and And... To what you were saying, referring before I forget, Don, pharmaceuticals, um, you know, that's a that's a touchy subject. They're, they're useful. I'm all about integrative health. You know, if you break your arm, you're going to go to the nearest hospital. You're going to get a fantastic surgeon. They're going to fix you. If you're in pain, they're fantastic. In the case of panic attacks and, 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 and the disease that we're talking about today, the reality of a pharmaceutical is that it takes two to three hours to actually... You know calm your system or or put you to sleep so when you're dealing with the symptoms uh, they don't do anything first of all there's no cure for that specific disease but even to address some of the symptoms they're counter benefit so there are different ways we can do and there are non-pharmacological approaches that have been scientifically proven our our intervention is been documented with research studies with with very esteemed global um, the physicians and researcher who knows that there are ways we can you know diminish stress meditation you know it's it's it's, it's all about being integrative integrative health is the new way of, of dealing with medicine and those intervention memory lane is just one of them is just one of the tools we need to have with us to address those symptoms without a pill hallelujah you, you keep talking <laughs> about integrative health can you Break, just give us a quick like uh, uh, definition. Yeah, it's of true. I, I, I use that as part of my jargon. I, I, I manage a not-for-profit here in Portland, Maine, for many years, the Center for Wellness Leadership, and my uh, goal was to promote integrative health. Uh, integrative health is basically the marriage between traditional Western approach of medicine and Eastern, a more esoterical approach of it, but that are all based on science. Um, so, uh, to give some examples um, that are very practical, some insurance company uh, uh, will pay for psychotherapy, for example, uh, it's, it's, you know, or for uh, meditation or um, uh, acupuncture, uh, uh, everything that is science-based and that is part of your care that is not direct by Western medicine is called integrative health. So it's, it's an approach that integrates all approach of medicine based on science. Some hospice programs that I'm learning now, they some of them offer music therapy, right. massage therapy, right. you know, so they offer those kinds of things lightly, but not enough. Yeah. So, and I think so that, that there is some, obviously there's validity to, to having that whole comprehensive uh, uh, tools, all those tools that help. Because one affects the other, you know, we can't just give somebody, I know that for a fact, just my mom, the reason why she's in hospice, she was hospitalized for something. And you, you realize like it, all the other things besides the medicine and the hospitalization, that's what brought her back was the love and the attention 
and the her realization somewhere deep in her consciousness that she was valuable and that she needed to stay or stick around. Right. And you know, integrative health also encom encompasses a, a preventative approach, um, whereas our Western approach of medicine is based on you've got a problem, I can fix it. Here's a pill, here's a tool. Right. But if you anticipate what's going to happen, if you eat well, if you exercise every day, if you manage, if you control what you eat, this is preventative medicine. You know, we, this is how Beautiful. it starts. Yeah. This is how your health journey starts, is monitoring what you eat, what you ingest, how you breathe, you know, breathing exercises, meditation, control your stress level. And, and this is, this is, this has been documented uh, and exists in science. It, it's not, it's not esoterical. You know, when we were mentioning massages, uh, you know, when people who have back injuries, they need massages, you know, there are, and there are mm -hmm. some uh, therapeutic uh, massages that are being uh, reimbursed by, by uh, the healthcare system because they're more mm -hmm. effective than the pills uh, to manage pain and to right. dis dissipate the, the, the tension. So yes that approach is essential yeah well that's what i mean what you're doing is basically a massage for the brain and the soul right <laughs> i mean it really is <laughs> it's it is it's stimulating it's it's you know it's healing and you know there's if you look at it that way you know there's no reason why insurance yeah. shouldn't pay for this right. because yeah. it 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 is just another it's another and a better form of therapy i've never had enough money to do um uh, a, a proper uh, clinical research, double-blinded, what we call in this world double-blinded studies where you have focus groups and it costs a lot of money. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, but we have noticed uh, from our um, internal research um, a correlation between uh, psychotropic uh, medication use uh, and diminution because when you, I was giving the example earlier on, when you don't need to manage a panic attack and you are dealing with it with um, visuals or music or another way to deal it, then there, so there is direct benefit is where I'm going with this and insurance should pay for it, not only because it's a good thing and a good massage, you know, and a soft massage, but also because we, we yeah. could save a lot of money. Uh, 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 by and and help people a lot by doing and using those tools. Absolutely, keeping, prophylactically, yeah. it, it you're going to you're going to detour deter a lot of um, problems that would happen without that. Like so, that's that would be that should be a motivation yeah. for our insurance companies and for our health system. Um, I'm I'm all for that. Um, but in the meantime, okay. you're uh, like I say, it's so affordable what you're doing that even oh, yeah. if insurance doesn't cover it, it's fine. It's, it's, right. it's really... fine, you guys. Okay, <laughs> we have gone already over an hour, Don. Oh wow! Because wow, this is so we exciting. are chatty. We are but really chatty. We are chatty. <laughs> no, but this is such a this is such a rich topic. I just want to. Can you just give us a, a recap anything like of, of memory lane that you want to for us for our audience? Tell them how where they can find it. Plus, not to mention it, it'll all be in the show notes, and you're going to be hearing from me and Don about this ad nauseum because we're very <laughs> we're huge fans of this. So we you're going to we're we're going to talk it until you're sick of us <laughs> but but uh well, any 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 final final things you'd like to say yes i want i want to emphasize how easy it is you know it's a positive plot-free multi-sensory media stimulation tool that is as easy as turning on and off your television just like you would do to watch a good netflix show except that this is the only Thing that is comparable to Netflix. It's a fantastic tool for the price of a cup of coffee, like Don was saying, a month. You can have a 24-7 specifically designed for people who have memory loss, but they're care partners, a wealth of information at your fingertips with tools that we already all have within. So why not? And, and the last thing that I want to say is a shout out. You know, it's like, we need help. We need people to help us how to get more content, to get it out there, to do so that people know that it exists, you know. And thank you again, Susie and Don, for giving me a voice today uh, and, and for helping raise that quest. And to every one of you listeners out there, uh, help us spread the world, 
go to memory-lane.tv or watchmemorylane.com and I mean the link is in there so they'll all find it and learn more and share it share it thank you very much both of you absolutely absolutely this is a this is a a, a passion project this comes from love you can feel it all over it which is why we we're all resonating so much for it because well don why why well, because we and it does come from love and but we all know about love is that love is powerful love is contagious and love conquers all and we all thank you for being here today and we look forward to seeing you next time have a great day yes and check we'll it see out you check soon. out check it out we love you and share and and um and rate and all the good things because all the good things it's worthwhile <laughs> take care bye bye, -bye. au revoir